The Epic of Gilgamesh, Chapter 4, The Search for Everlasting Life. Bitterly, Gilgamesh wept for his friend Enkidu. He wandered over the wilderness as a hunter. He roamed over the plains, and in his bitterness he cried, Oh, how can I rest? How can I be at peace? Despair is in my heart. What my brother is now that I shall be when I am dead. Because I am afraid of death, I will go as best I can to find Utan Svitan. Utan Pishtim. Utna Pishtim. Utna Pishtim, who they called the far away, for he has entered the assembly of the gods. So Gilgamesh traveled over the wilderness. He ha wandered over the grasslands, a long journey in search of Utan Pishtim whom the gods took after the deluge. And they set him to live in the land of Dilmun, in the garden of the sun, and to him alone of men they gave everlasting life. At night when he came to the mountain passes, Gilgamesh prayed, In these mountain passes long ago I saw lions. I was afraid, and I lifted my eyes to the moon. I prayed, and my prayers went up to the gods. So now, O moon god Sin, protect me. When he had prayed, he lay down to sleep, until he was woken from out of a dream. He saw the lions round him glorifying in life. When he took his axe in his hand, he drew his sword from his belt, and he fell upon them like an arrow from the string, and struck and destroyed and scattered them. So at length Gilgamesh came to Mashu, the great mountains, about which he had heard many things, which guard the rising and the setting of the sun. Its twin peaks are as high as the wall of heaven, and its paps reach down to the underworld. At its gate the scorpions stand guard, half man and half dragon. Their glory is terrifying, their stare strikes death into men. Their shimmering halo sweeps the mountain that guard the rising sun. When Gilgamesh saw them, he shielded his eyes for the length of a moment only. Then he took courage and approached. When they saw him so undismayed, the man scorpion called to his mate. This one who comes to us now is flesh of the gods. The mate of the man scorpion answered, Two thirds is god, but one third is man. Then he called to the man Gilgamesh. He called to the child of the gods. Why have you come so great a journey? For what have you traveled so far, crossing the dangerous waters? Tell me the reason for your coming. Gilgamesh answered, For in Kidu, I love him dearly. Together we endure all kinds of hardships. On his account I have come, for the common lot of man has taken him. I have wept for him day and night. I would not give up his body for burial. I thought my friend would come back because of my weeping. Since he went, my life is nothing. That is why I have traveled here in search of Utan Pishtim, my father. For men say he has entered the assembly of the gods and has found everlasting life. I have desired to question him concerning the living and the dead. The man scorpion opens his mouth and said, speaking to Gilgamesh, no man born of woman has done what you have asked. No mortal man has gone into the mountain. The length of it is twelve leagues of darkness. In it there is no light, but the heat is oppressed with darkness. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, there is no light. Gilgamesh said, Although I should go in sorrow and in pain, with sighing and with weeping, still I must go. Open the gate of the mountain said the man scorpion. Go, Gilgamesh, I permit you to pass through the mountain of Mashu and through the high ranges. May your feet carry you safely home. The gate of the mountain is open. When Gilgamesh heard this, he did as the man scorpion had said. He followed the sun's road to his rising. Through the mountain, when he had gone one length, the darkness became thick around him, for there was no light. He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. After two leagues, the darkness was thick and there was no light. 
He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. After three leagues, the darkness was thick and there was no light. He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. After four leagues, the darkness was thick and there was no light. He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. At the end of five leagues, the darkness was thick. There was no light. He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. At the end of six leagues, the darkness was thick. There was no light. He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. When he had gone seven leagues, the darkness was thick. There was no light. He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. When he had gone great leagues, eight leagues, Gilgamesh gave a great cry, for the darkness was thick, and he could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. After nine leagues, he felt the north wind on his face, but the darkness was thick and there was no light. He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. After ten leagues, the end was near, but there was no light. He could see nothing ahead and nothing behind him. After eleven leagues, the dawn light appeared. At the end of twelve leagues, the sun streamed out. There was the garden of the gods. All around him stood bushes bearing gems. Seeing it, he went down at once, for there was fruit of canelin with the vine hanging from it, beautiful to look at. Lapis lazul leaves hung thick with fruit, sweet to see. For thorns and thistles, there were hematite and rare stones, agate and pearls from out of the sea. While Gilgamesh walked in the garden by the edge of the sea, Shamas saw him, and he saw that he was dressed in the skins of animals and ate their flesh. He was distressed and spoke and said, No mortal man has gone this way before, nor will as long as the wind drive over the sea. And to Gilgamesh he said, You will never find the life for which you are searching. Gilgamesh said to glorious Shamash, now that I have toiled and strained so far over the wilderness, am I to sleep and let the earth cover my head forever? Let my eyes see the sun until they are dazzled with looking. Although I am no better than a dead man, still let me see the light of the sun. Beside the sea she lives, the woman of the vine, the maker of wine. Siduri sits in the garden at the edge of the sea with the golden bowl and the golden vats with the gods gave her. She is covered with a veil, and where she sits she sees Gilgamesh coming towards her, wearing skins, the flesh of the gods in his body, but despair in his heart. In his face, like the face of one who has made a long journey, she looked, and as she scanned the distance she said in her own heart, Surely this is some felon, where is he going now? And she barred her gate against him with the crossbar, and shot home the bolt. But Gilgamesh, hearing the sound of the bolt, threw up his head and lodged his foot in the gate. He called to her, Young woman, maker of wine, why do you bolt your door? What did you see that made you bar the gate? I will break in your door and burst in your gate, for I am Gilgamesh, who seized and killed the bull of heaven. I overthrew Humbaba who lived in the forest, and I killed the lions in the passes of the mountains. Then Suduri said to him, If you are that Gilgamesh who seized and killed the bull of heaven, who killed the watchman of the cedar forest, who overthrew Humbaba that lived in the forest, and killed the lions in the passes of the mountain, why are your cheeks so starved? Why is your face so drawn? Why is despair in your heart, and your face like the face of one who has made a long journey? Yes, why is your face burned from heat and cold? And why do you come here, wandering over the pastures in search of the wind? Gilgamesh answered her, And why should not my cheeks be starved and my face drawn? Despair is in my heart, and my face is the face of one who has made a long journey. It is burned with heat and with cold. 
Why should I not wander over the pastures in search of the wind? My friend, my younger brother, he who hunted the wild ass of the wilderness in the panther of the plains. My friend, my younger brother who seized and killed the bowl of heaven and overthrew Humbaba in the cedar forest. My friend who was very dear to me and who endured dangers beside me. Inkidu, my brother, whom I loved, the end of mortality has overtaken him. I wept for him seven days and nights till the worms fastened on him. Because of my brother, I am afraid of death. Because of my brother, I stray through the wilderness and cannot rest. But now, young woman, maker of wine, since I have seen your face, do let me not see the face of death which I dread so much. She answered, Gilgamesh, where are you hurrying to? You will never find that life for which you are looking. When the gods created man, they allotted to him death, but life they retained in their own keeping. As for you, Gilgamesh, fill your billy with good things. Day and night, night and day, dance and be merry, feast and rejoice. Let your clothes be fresh, bathe yourself in water, cherish the little child that holds your hand, and make your wife happy in your embrace. For this too is the lot of man. But Gilgamesh said to Siduri, the young woman, How can I be silent? How can I rest when Enkidu, whom I love, is dust, and I too shall die and be laid in the earth? You live by the seashore and look into the heart of it. Young woman, tell me now, which is the way to Utan Pishtim, the son of Ubatutu? Which directions are there for the passage? Give me, oh give me my directions. I will cross the ocean if it is possible. If it is not, I will wander still farther in the wilderness. The winemaker said to him, Gilgamesh, there is no crossing the ocean. Whoever has come since the days of old has not been able to pass that sea. The sun and his glory crosses the ocean, but who besides Shamas has ever crossed it? The place and the passage are difficult, and the waters of death are deep which flow between. Gilgamesh, how will you cross the ocean? When you come to the waters of death, what will you do? But Gilgamesh, down in the woods you will find Ushanabi, the ferryman of Utan Pishtim. With him are the holy things, the things of stone. He is fashioning the serpent prow of the boat. Look at him well, and if it is possible, perhaps you will cross the waters with him. But if it is not possible, then you must go back. When Gigam Gilgamesh heard this, he was seized with anger. He took his axe in his hand and his dagger from his belt, and he crept forward, and he fell on them like a javelin. Then he went in the forest and sat down. Ushinabi saw the dagger flash and heard the axe and he beat his head, for Gilgamesh had shattered the tackle of the boat in his rage. Ushinabi said to him, Tell me, what is your name? I am Ushinabi, the ferryman of Utan Pishtim, the far away. He replied to him, Gilgamesh is my name. I am from Uruk, from the house of Anu. Then Ushinabi said to him, Why are your cheeks so starved and your face drawn? Why is despair in your heart and your face like the face of one who has made a long journey? Yes, why is your face burned with heat and with cold? And why do you come here wandering over the pastures in search of the wind? Gilgamesh said to him, Why should not my cheeks be starved and my face drawn? Despair is in my heart, and my face is the face of one who has made a long journey. I was burned with heat and with cold. Why should I not wander over the pastures? My friend, my younger brother, who seized and killed the bull of heaven, and overthrew Humbaba in the cedar forest. My friend who was very dear to me, and who endured dangers beside me. Inkidu, my brother whom I loved. The end of mortality has overtaken him. I wept for him seven days and nights till the worm feasted on him. Because of my brother, I am afraid of death. Because of my brother, I strayed through the wilderness. His fate lies heavy upon me. His, how can I be silent? How can I rest? He is dust, and I too shall die and be laid in the earth forever. I am afraid of death. Therefore, Ushinabi, 
Tell me, which is the road to, to Utan Pishtim? If it is possible, I will cross the waters of death. For not, I will wander still farther through the wilderness. If not, I will wander still farther through the wilderness. Ushanabi said to him, Gilgamesh, your own hands have prevented you from crossing the ocean. When you destroyed the tackle of the boat, you destroyed its safety. Then the two of them talked it over, and Gilgamesh said, Why are you so angry with me, Ushanabi? For you yourself cross the sea by day and night. At all seasons you cross it. Gilgamesh, these things you destroyed, their properties to carry me over the water, to prevent the waters of death from touching me. It is for this reason that I preserved them, but you have destroyed them, and the Unu snakes with them. But now go into the forest, Gilgamesh, with your axe cut poles, 120. Cut them 60 cubit long, paint them with bitmoon, set on them for rules, and bring them back. When Gilgamesh heard this, he went into the forest. He cut poles, 120. He cut them 60 cubits long. He painted them with bitumen. He set on them for rules, and he brought them to Ushanabi. Then they boarded the boat, Gilgamesh and Ushanabi together, launching it out over the waves of ocean. For three days they ran on it as were a journey of a month and 15 days. And at last, Ushanabi brought the boat to the waters of death. Then Ushanabi said to Gilgamesh, Press on, take a pole and thrust it in, but do not let your hands touch the waters. Gilgamesh, take a second pole, take a third, take a fourth pole. Now Gilgamesh, take a fifth, take a sixth and seventh pole. Gilgamesh, take an eighth, a ninth and a tenth pole. Gilgamesh, take an eleventh, take a twelfth pole. After 120 times, Gilgamesh had used the last pole. Then he stripped himself, he held up his arms for a mast, and his covering for a sail. So Yushanabi the ferryman brought Gilgamesh to Utan Pishtim, whom they call the far away, who lives in Dulaman at the place of the sun's transit, eastward of the mountain. To him alone of men the gods had given everlasting life. Now Utan Pishtim, where he lay at ease, looking into the distance, and he said in his heart, musing to himself, Why does the boat sail here without tackle and mast? Why are the sacred stones destroyed? And why does the master not sail the boat? That man who comes is none of mine. Where I look I see a man whose body is covered with skins of beasts. Who is this who walks up the shore behind Ushanabi? For surely he is no man of mine. So Utan Pishtim looked at him and said, what is your name, you who come here wearing the skins of beasts, with your cheeks starved and your face drawn? Where are you hurrying to now? For what reason have you made this great journey, crossing these seas whose passage is difficult? Tell me the reason for your coming. He replied, Gilgamesh is my name. I am from Uruk, from the house of Anu. When Intun Pushtim said to him, If you are Gilgamesh, why are your cheeks so starved and your face drawn? Why is despair in your heart and your face like the face of one who has made a long journey? Yes, why is your face burned with heat and cold? And why do you come here, wandering over the wilderness in search of the wind? Gilgamesh said to him, Why should not my cheeks be starved and my face drawn? Despair is in my heart, and my face is the face of one who has made a long journey. It was burned with heat, with cold. Why should I not wander over the pasture? My friend, my younger brother, who seized and killed the bull of heaven, and overthrew Humbaba in the cedar forest. My friend, who was very dear to me, and endured dangers beside me. In Kidu, my brother whom I loved, the end of mortality has overtaken him. I wept for him seven days and seven nights, till the worm fastened on him. Because of my brother, I am afraid of death. Because of my brother, I strayed through the wilderness. His fate lies heavy upon me. How can I be silent? How can I rest? He is dust, and I shall die also, and be laid in the earth forever. Again, Gilgamesh said, speaking to Utan Pishtim, It is to see Utan Pishtim, whom we call the far away, that I have come this journey. For this I have wandered over the world. I have crossed many difficult ranges. I have crossed the seas. I have wearied myself with traveling. My joints are aching, 
and I have lost acquaintance with sleep, which is sweet. My clothes are worn out before I come to the house of Suduri. I have killed the bear and hyena, the lion and panther, the tiger, the stag, and the ibex, all sorts of wild game, and the small creatures of the pasture. I ate their flesh, and I wore their skins, and that was how I came to the gate of the young woman, the maker of wine, who guard her gate of pitch and bitum against me. But from her I had news of the journey. So then I came to Ushinabi, the ferryman, and with him I crossed over the waters of death. O oh, father, Utan Pishtim, you who have entered the assembly of the gods, I wish to question you concerning the living and the dead. How shall I find the life for which I am searching? Ushtan Pishtim said, There is no permanence. Do we build a house to stand forever? Do we seal a contract to hold for all time? Do brothers divide an inheritance to keep forever? Does the flood time of rivers endure? It is only the nymph of the dragonfly who sheds her larva and sees the sun in his glory. From the days of old, there is no permanence. The sleeping and the dead, how alike they are, they are like a painted death. What is there between the master and the servant when both have fulfilled their doom? When the Anunnaki, the judges, come together, the Mamutin, the mother of destinies, together they decree the fates of men. Life and death they allot, but the law day of death they do not disclose. Then Gilgamesh said to Utan Pishtim the far away, I look at you now, Utan Pishtim, and your appearance is no different from mine. There is nothing strange in your features. I thought I should find you like a hero prepared for battle. But you lie here, taking your ease on your back. Tell me truly, how was it that you came to enter the company of the gods and to possess everlasting light? Utan Pishtim said to Gilgamesh, I will reveal to you a mystery. I will tell you the secrets of the gods.